Today's case from Houston, Texas is so crazy, Lifetime turned it into a movie. Clara and David Harris had a perfect life. Three kids, successful businesses, and a mansion. However, that dream turned into a nightmare when Clara uncovered David's infidelity. To save their marriage, David had the audacity to give Clara a heartless condition. If she followed a to-do list to be more like his mistress, David promised to end the affair. A desperate Clara agreed. But when Clara discovered David was still having the affair, she took matters into her own hands. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Clara Suarez was born on February 3, 1958 in Bogota, Colombia. She was raised by her widowed mother and knew from an early age she wanted the best the world can offer. And in order to get the best, she had to work hard. By her early 20s, she became a successful dentist, but her ambition didn't end there. In the late 80s, she came to the United States seeking better opportunities. Unfortunately, she had to start from the bottom, so she began working as a cleaning lady to pay for dental school in Houston. By 1991, 33 year old Clara began working at Castle Dental Center where she met her future husband David Harris and sparks flew immediately. Their friends thought that they were a perfect match. The gorgeous and driven former Miss Columbia Houston was smitten by David's charming and folksy ways. He was the sort of person that loved saying the word golly. The pair were absolutely love struck with one another and on Valentine's Day 1992 they got married at the Nassau Bay Hilton Hotel. In an interview with Lake Jackson newspaper, Clara was quoted as saying, I found the one God had reserved for me. They ran two successful orthodontic practices and became quite wealthy. Clara and David moved into a half a million dollar palatial style mansion and Clara purchased the car of her dreams, an S-Class 430 Mercedes Benz. Clara regularly called David two to three times a day and he instructed his receptionist to never put Clara on hold and to call him right away. It was like they were always in the honeymoon phase. She even got along great with David's daughter, Lindsay, who lived with them. At 40 years old, Clara had twin boys. It was the fairy tale life she always wanted. Clara was determined to be the wife and mother who did it all. No matter how busy her day was or how many patients she saw, she always managed to get home in time to cook dinner for her family. To Clara, David was her soulmate and the love of her life and the man she would grow old with. The end of a fairy tale. After 10 years of seemingly wedded bliss, cracks began to show in the marriage. It started when Clara noticed changes in David. By now, the couple were socialites and well known in the community, but David was no longer showing up to events, leaving Clara to attend alone. She would try to explain to their friends that David was playing golf or had a meeting. At 44, David started a strict workout and diet regimen and worked out nearly every day. Their once lovey-dovey daily calls ended because David stopped taking them. What Clara didn't know was that David had started an affair with single mother of three, Gail Bridges, months earlier. Gail was the new receptionist at David's practice, Space Center Orthodontics. Before her divorce, she was an affluent stay-at-home mom. But her life took a turn when her husband accused Gail of cheating on him with her female best friend. Now a single mom, she got a job at David's practice and the two clicked immediately. It soon became office gossip that Gail was out to get herself a rich man. She was pretty, petite, and paid attention to David. As the days went by, David started spending more and more time at the front desk with the pretty divorcee. In February 2002, they were just friends, and by May, they started sleeping together. Gail told some of her work friends that David told her that he didn't love Clara anymore and only stayed with her for the kids and their business. She even claimed that David confessed his love to her. To make matters worse, they didn't even try to hide the affair. Their co-workers would see the pair openly flirt and grope each other in the office. At one point, David's co-workers turned off their CCTV because of constant inappropriate behavior. On the 4th of July weekend 2002, the Harris family went on vacation to Jamaica. David's co-workers hoped that the vacation would get him to rededicate himself to his marriage. But when he returned, the situation only got worse. Things had gotten so bad that his co-workers had an intervention and confronted him about the affair. When someone suggested that he fire Gail, he said no. He said that he still loved Clara and didn't want to get a divorce, but he also had feelings for Gail. 
Even though no one told Clara what was going on, she became worried about David's behavior. On a late night in July, Clara asked David if he truly loved her. He didn't answer the question. But the next day, he sat her down and told her the truth. He was having a months long affair with the receptionist. Clara asked if he wanted a divorce and he told her no. That same night, they went out for drinks to talk about the status of their relationship. For Clara, she couldn't stop thinking about what Gail had that she didn't have. And so, she asked David to compare her to Gail. And David actually went along with the request and told her that she had some good qualities and was a good businesswoman. But she had several bad qualities. David didn't like that Clara paid more attention to the kids than she did on him. He also didn't like that she wasn't obedient. He called her fat and told her that she was too opinionated. Each word was like a physical blow to Clara, who had devoted her entire life to her husband and children. David wasn't finished and told Clara that he loved that Gail paid attention to him and that he was her top priority. He also pointed out how he loved Gail's breast implants. David told her if she wanted him to really end things with Gail, then she had to do the following. Lose weight, get breast implants, get better looking, sleep with him more often, and quit working. Clara's world was crashing down around her, and she was desperate to win David's love again. And just like how she accomplished her other goals, she put in the work, and that same week, she started to follow the list. She canceled a week worth of appointments, dyed her hair blonde, got on a strict diet, and even put a deposit down for a breast augmentation. The following week, David and Clara told his parents and his daughter about the affair. He even asked for their forgiveness. According to David's father, it was the start of the healing process. And as part of the healing process, David told Clara that he wanted to speak with Gail to apologize and he didn't just want to break off all communication with her. All the while, Gail was still working at his office. Clara hated the plan, but she reluctantly agreed. David's last night. Despite David's promise, Clara felt in her gut that he wouldn't keep his word. So on July 23rd, 2002, she hired a private investigator from Blue Moon Investigations to track her husband and make sure that he was going to the restaurant. The next day on July 24th, private investigator Lindsay Duback tailed David from his orthopedic practice. But instead of going to the restaurant like he said, he drove straight to the Hilton Hotel, the same hotel where he and Clara had their wedding. As David was going to the hotel, Clara was speaking with a friend that she asked to wait at the restaurant. The friend was Clara's backup plan to confirm if David actually went to the restaurant or not. When Clara's friend told her that David was a no-show, she immediately called Blue Moon. The owner of the PI firm told Clara that they knew that David never went to the restaurant and he was at another location, but they refused to tell her where. Blue Moon didn't like to tell clients play-by-play -play information to avoid messy confrontations. But Clara was able to get to another investigator to tell her that David was at a hotel. Despite the investigator not telling her the name of the hotel, Clara knew exactly where David went. While Clara was trying to get information about David's whereabouts, Lindsay Dubeck had walked into the hotel right behind David and Gail. Once the pair checked in, she went back to her car, set up her camera, then waited. And as the PI waited, Clara went on the hunt. Clara, along with her 16-year-old stepdaughter Lindsay, jumped into the car and sped off to the hotel. The pair were going to confront David. When she and Lindsay got to the hotel, she tried to find out if Gail and David checked in, but the front desk told her no. Not to be detoured, Lindsay called her dad and told him that the twins were sick and he had to come home right away. And with the bait set, Clara and Lindsay waited in the lobby and watched the elevator. As the elevator doors opened a few minutes later, what Clara saw made her blood boil. Her husband David stepped out of the elevator hand in hand with his mistress. Clara ran up to Gail and screamed, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. David Harris and he's his secretary. She then punched Gail in the face. Clara tore at Gail's blouse, ripping it off of her and the two got into an all out brawl. All the while, Lindsay was hitting her dad with her purse screaming that she hated him. It took several hotel employees to break up the fight. When all was said and done, Gail and David were escorted to their car on one side of the parking lot, and Clara and Lindsay were escorted to their car on the other side of the parking lot. What Clara didn't realize was that the private investigator she hired was still in the parking lot. 
and she was recording everything. Clara and Lizzie got into the car and as she cranked the engine, she spotted David and Gail near Gail's car. Clara saw red. She slammed down on the gas and sped through the parking lot, aiming straight at David. The impact propelled him 25 feet into the air before he hit the ground. She then reversed the car on top of him. According to witnesses, when the car stopped, Lindsay jumped out and ran over to the driver's side and punched Clara in the face. When Clara got out of the car, she didn't seem to know what to do. She walked over to her husband sobbing, crying that she was sorry and that she loved David. The police and ambulance were called, but David was pronounced dead at the hospital. Clara was arrested and charged with murder, and as the police worked the scene of the crime, Lindsay Dubeck walked to the officer in charge and told him that she had a recording of the whole crime. The Trial The trial made international headlines about a jilted wife who had been betrayed and wasn't going to take it anymore. One British tabloid dubbed her the Driller Killer. Editorials were split on supporting what she did as a woman that acted out the fantasies of all betrayed women to those who said that she could have just left her husband. The trial started on January 23, 2004. The prosecutor presented the case of a woman scorned who wanted revenge. The prosecutor said she turned her $70,000 vehicle into a 4,000 pound weapon. Her stepdaughter Lindsay testified against Clara and stated that Clara said that she was going to hit him right before it happened. According to Lindsay, after the initial impact, she begged Clara to stop and screamed that she was killing him. But Clara didn't seem to hear Lindsay at all. Eyewitnesses said that Clara first hit Gail's SUV, then she went after David and hit him twice with her Mercedes. When it was the defense's turn, Clara's lawyer said that David's death was an accident and she was really aiming for Gail's SUV. The defense told the jury about David's to-do list and that Clara wasn't mentally stable at the time of the accident. Even Clara's mother and brother-in-law testified on Clara's behalf. They both told the jury how Clara was a devoted mother and wife and extremely hardworking. They also spoke about how she was absolutely in love with David. Clara's mother-in-law also said that they still consider Clara a part of the family. After five days of testimony, the state rested its case. Clara's lawyer had hoped that if Clara was found guilty, at the very least, the jury would be sympathetic and give her a light sentence. He successfully convinced the jury that David's death was a crime of passion and not an attempt to kill. It took the jury only eight hours to find Clara guilty of murder. She was sentenced to 20 years in prison. After everything was said and done, there was only one matter left. Who would take custody of Clara's five-year-old twin boys? Much to David's family surprise, Clara gave custody to one of her best friends and neighbors. The Harrises wanted David's brother Gerald and his wife to be the ones to get custody. The Aftermath when Clara told the Harrises she didn't want Gerald and his wife living in her house or taking care of her boys, David's parents decided to sue her for $5 million in July 2004. The Harrises filed the wrongful death lawsuit for loss of companionship, mental anguish, and loss of financial support. Allegedly, David told his parents that he would take care of them in their old age. The jury awarded the Harrises $3.75 million. This was the second lawsuit that was filed against her. The first being Lindsay who sued Clara on behalf of herself and the twins in June 2004 for wrongful death and was awarded $2 million. In prison, Clara learned Braille and worked several hours a day translating school textbooks into Braille. She also didn't break any of the prison rules and was a model prisoner. Her sons visited her every month without fail. The twins spoke at Clara's parole hearing asking for their mother to be released early. In 2018, Clara was released at 60 years old on parole after serving 15 years. As of February 2023, she is completely off of probation and is a free woman. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. This is one of the few cases where we sympathize with the killer. Clara shouldn't have killed her husband, but we see how she got to that point. If you want to see more cases like this, let us know in the comments.